Good morning. Welcome to you all on this 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And welcome to all our visitors. We have a few of you today. Lovely to see you here. We have a custom in our parish. At the end of the Mass, we all kneel and silently say three Hail Marys for the next one amongst us to be called one by God. We ask you to silence your cell phones for the duration of the Mass, please. And we do not take up a collection during the Mass. Instead, we have boxes on the wall that you may use as you leave. For confessions and Mass during the week, Father Jeff will be away until Saturday next week on retreat. Please pray for him. Not that he needs it, he's a holy man, but... <laughs> In his place, Father Bill Endress will be here to say Mass Monday through Friday, which does include Tuesday morning at 8 a.m. And he will also be available for confessions on Wednesday, October 19th, from 4 to 6 p.m. at St. Mary's here. Readings for this Mass can be found at the back of the hymnal on page 1178. Our Mass intention for this Mass is Duke and Wayne Osborne. In the silence that follows, I invite you to prepare your heart as you ponder, who is Jesus asking? When we hear the question today, will the Son of Man find faith on earth? And may God bless you. stand for our work.
Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, refuge of the weak, Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, hope of sinners, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, on earth peace, to people of the world. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks. Amalek 
back had the better of the height. Moses' hands, however, grew tired. So they put a rock in place for him to sit on. Meanwhile, Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side and one on the other, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. And Joshua mowed down Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. The word of the Lord. Our psalm is number 83, Psalm 121. Our help comes from the Lord, number 83.
can see, you have known the sacred scriptures, which are capable of giving you wisdom for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for refutation, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that one who belongs to God may be competent, equipped for every good work. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingly power, proclaim the word. Be persistent whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Convince, reprimand, and courage through all patience and teaching. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Israelites could take the promised land. 
And Moses says to Joshua, go down and fight them. I'll be up on the hill with God's staff. So he takes Aaron and Hur, climbs up the hill. And as we heard, as long as Moses had his hands elevated, the Israelites were winning. But as Father Jeff can attest, after several masses in a day, you can't hold your hands like that very long. Or they start to droop. Your arms get tired. So Aaron and her are intelligent men. They get a big rock, they set Moses down, and they hold his hands up. And so at the end of the day, the Israelites have defeated the Amalekites. That's persistence. That's perseverance. That's stick to itiveness, whatever you want to call it. That's going for the goal and staying with it. Not giving up because of some adversity. Or in Moses' case, probably some pain in the arms. Then we move on to the psalm. God is our help, who, the creator of heaven and earth. And if you listen to the words, it talks about how we consistently can turn to God and God will help us. It's our faith that allows that. It's that gift that God has given us of faith that we have the courage to turn to God and say, we need your help. We need you to come into this situation and make it better for us because we can't do it. So now we move on to the reading from the letter of Paul to Timothy. And he specifically says, you need to be familiar with Scripture. You need to be consistent with it. You need to use it for teaching and reprimanding and all the other things that he mentioned. And it's through Scripture that we get to know God. It's through Scripture that God speaks directly to us. And it's through Scripture that we create this loving relationship. I'm sorry, God creates that relationship. And we strengthen it on our end by becoming familiar with what God has said, what God has promised, and what God expects us to do. Now we get to the Gospel. This one has a couple of uh, pitfalls if we're not careful. We have to understand that in Jesus' parable, he is not comparing God to this dishonest judge. In fact, they're polar opposites. Where the dishonest judge doesn't care about anybody himself, God cares about all of us deeply and wants to be a part of our lives. It's, it's difficult to really get the depth of what this parable is saying here. There's so much that God wants to give us. We need to be open to that. And it's through this relationship that we can build with God that that can happen. We have to be perseverant in, in everything that we do. Now, I'm pretty sure our, our cantor Tom will attest to the fact that you don't just pick up a guitar and immediately know how to play it. Uh, although knowing Tom, maybe that was exactly the case. I don't know. Talented musician. But you have to stay with it. You don't immediately learn how to do something that complex. On a simpler note, last summer I took up the sport of disc golf. Now if you're not familiar with what that is, you're, you're throwing a frisbee-like disc towards a basket, trying to get it in and a few number of throws, kind of like regular golf. And when I first started, I told people, you know, if I get just a little bit better, I'll be terrible. <coughs> so after a year's practice and working with people better than myself and, and playing a lot, I can say I'm only moderately bad now, so I'm getting better. <coughs> But it's that kind of perseverance that we need to have in order to succeed in anything, and especially in our relationship with God. That's why we come here as often as we can to receive Jesus in the body and blood, to receive him in the word, and to receive him in the community. Jesus asked a very uncomfortable question at the end of this. But when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? God has promised that there will always be a remnant of his faithful people. 
That's how the Israelites managed to get through the diaspora being dispersed throughout the, the world and finally coming back together. It's through that faith in God that was that remnant that kept them strong and going. I'm convinced in my heart that if we keep this relationship going, if we read scripture, if we try to understand it, if we come to the Eucharist whenever possible and let our faith grow and be nourished by God, at the end of time, when the Son of Man does come, I believe that he will indeed find faith on the earth. Comfort and grace. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our For Jack Graham, who died this week, for Duke and Wayne Osborne, for whom this Mass is offered, and for all who have died to receive eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our For those intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, good and loving God, knowing your care for us, we entrust all these prayers to, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for by his birth he bought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, in the company of angels and saints, we sing a hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Especially the 
most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with their blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Benedict and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis Erpel, and Salvatore Bishop, the order of bishops of the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing through this life, give kind remittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
by what you give in this present age and prepare for the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you.